Let's talk a little more about your professional field, about military questions. So I see your book on the shelf, How ISIS Fights. So I remember that you were talking about the parallels of the behavior of Russian army uh, here in Ukraine and what they were doing in Syria as well. But my question is, do you see any new elements in the strategy or maybe in the tactics of Russian army? I'm not talking about Wagner team. It's, it's another question later but the army the regular army or they're mostly reacting right now on the situation on the battlefield how do you see what changed in their um, behavior so when i wrote this piece i was uh, mainly talking about the the hybrid element uh, you know the infiltrations the assassinations the kidnappings the usage of ieds improvised explosive devices in retrogrades in, in retreats when they retreat and cover their retreats you know planting it everywhere in kiev uh, in kiev oblast and, uh, and elsewhere including children uh, playgrounds so i was talking about the, the, that way of, of fighting uh, but also two other aspects, which is the, the abuse of religion, because they, they, they mobilize on uh, using religious texts and religious uh, institutions, which ISIS used to do as well, and also on uh, the use of sexual violence and rape and so on, which uh, ISIS as well used to do. So I was talking about the, these dimensions. And then they added the beheadings recently, you know, as you, you saw from the... Uh, so they, they add uh, these bits. But in the conventional warfare, they, they have much more assets and capabilities than, than ISIS ever have would have dreamed of which makes them a lot more dangerous in that, in that dimension. But for a quick review in terms of the, the military situation, so phase one, Ukraine uh, really won that, that phase between February and April 2022, uh, liberated uh, you know, the four northern provinces, Jitomer, Kiev, Chernev, and Sumy, uh, and then also parts of, uh, of Kharkiv, and uh, that was a, a Ukrainian victory. In, the, in phase one of the war. Second phase in, in the summer of 2022, it was dominated by artillery du duels in the Donbass and very limited maneuver warfare, a uh, bit of trench warfare as well, but also there was some uh, breakthroughs for the Russian sides that ended up with the temporarily, uh, the fall of Luhansk uh, temporarily. And then we entered phase three in the autumn of uh, 2022 uh, with uh, really a series of stunning Ukrainian counteroffensives that uh, shocked everybody, uh, friend and foe, uh, or friends and foes, and then uh, liberated part, most of the uh, Kharkiv province and uh, Kherson city, the only provisional capital that the Russians have captured during the, this war, or the escalation of this war in 2022. And in many ways, uh, you saw the impact as well of the, uh, of the Western uh, systems, uh, the Western guided artillery system, such as the, the, the HIMARS, and also the need for infantry fighting vehicles, tanks, manpower, or, or men and women power, soldier power, and uh, and also air cover and support, and you know, hence the Zelensky's appeal to Westminster. You know, we have we have freedom, but give us wings to protect it. I think that 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 uh, that statement will last forever. I think in uh, in the UK uh, or in the British uh, uh, audience history. So that was uh, phase three was uh, was another Ukrainian uh, victory for a counteroffensive. And then phase four, I think Russia went on the defensive in phase four. It, uh, because of the change of the, of the commander, Zirovikin uh, came and uh, he decided to do these retrogrades and uh, stay on the defensive uh, while using a Syria style air terrorism campaign of targeting you know, soft uh, civilian targets uh, from the air, partly by uh, cruising ballistic missiles, but also by uh, Iranian-made uh, loitering munitions and, and uh, drones. Uh, and then we, we uh, so that phase was not uh, very clear. And then we had, an, after that phase, quickly phase five, the Russian counteroffensive, which I think has, does not have much to show for, uh, for aside from a few streets and neighborhoods in, in Bakhmut. Uh, it was defeated entirely in Volhadar, and it was defeated in Avdiivka. Uh, nothing happened in uh, the Krimina Svatove line. And uh, what you had is a bit of an advance. And who did that advance, allegedly, uh, in Solidar? And uh, it was, at least there was a major contribution with the Wagner uh, forces. So the non, non, uh, the irregular, uh, non-official uh, Russian uh, forces. So that was phase five. And then now I think we're about to, the phase five as well showed some, some issues, uh, militarily speaking. So they showed that the air battle is, is very important. And uh, the VKS, it seems to me, to the Russian Air Force, it seemed to me that uh, did not take a lot of damage. And uh, therefore, it, it's still uh, dangerous compared to 
the army was destroyed. As, as you saw in the parade, you know, the, the army was, the losses are just staggering. Uh, the Air Force is not. So you uh, you have the, uh, the, the, the BKS maybe still intact, and therefore Ukraine will need a lot of air defense assets. Uh, including uh, the munitions uh, for the Soviet systems, which have been doing quite well, especially the, the book systems and the OSA systems uh, in terms of protection of even uh, assets like high bars and uh, other art artillery assets. Uh, so, and also the uh, urban uh, city targets um, that the Russians choose to do. So that they will need some um, uh, some support in that dimension. And I think that the, the uh, friends of Ukraine are, are scrambling to, to do so at the moment. Uh, but also there was an exposure in European, let's say, defense industry in terms of uh, uh, we have a crisis of, of artillery shells. Uh, among other lack in, in assets. So th these are all phase five, uh, let's say from phase three to phase five, th this was all uh, uh, exposed. The ground battle is, uh, as I said, you know, the, the Russians do not have much to show for the counteroffensive. I mean, it was, uh, it, it, they just, many, they lost a lot of infantry and a lot of assets uh, in that, uh, from Volodar all the way to Zvatove, uh, and including, of course, in, in Bakhmut. Uh, and they, they, the, 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 now it's about, it's more or less, so we, it's called the meat assaults. You know, meat assaults to um, put a lot of manpower used by Wagner at the front and attempt to distract the Ukrainian forces by, by these meat assaults and attempt to do an offensive maneuver or a, a move around the flanks by the more experienced uh, Wagner forces with the, the VDV, with the uh, Russian airborne uh, support, but you don't have a an infinite uh, support from uh, from the, these uh, convicted criminals that Wagner use, and uh, also you don't have a even uh, lessons learned or an adaptive strategy uh, because we saw the same mistakes that was done in February 20, 2022 uh, done in Vohledar by the naval infantry. Uh, when they attempted to uh, to take it, uh, also lack of combined arms, uh, frontal assaults, uh, all of the mistakes that were done uh, previously. So, so, so that's a picture uh, that that tells you more or less um, that the counteroffensive has failed. Russia has some still some very dangerous a assets, including in the air force. There, there are rifts very clearly between its uh, let's say warlords, you know, uh, Kadyrov and uh, Prigozhin and others, and the official generals, uh, Rasimov and uh, Shwego and, and, and the rest, with some uh, alliances, by the way, so that there are still, the warlords have allies in the official uh, military establishment because they get supported uh, by them every now and then. Um, so it's a mixed pictures. And everybody now is waiting for phase six, which is the Ukraine's uh, counteroffensive. Uh, and it's, it's very it's very difficult to to predict because on one end these are two relatively speaking new armies. Um, so the Russians, as I said before, the the, the two hundred thousand were destroyed, and now it's a, it's an army of uh, mobics of mobilized uh, soldiers, whether from the Russian proper or from Ukrainian territories, uh, from from Luhansk and. Uh, so-called uh, Second Corps uh, or the Donetsk, the so-called uh, First Corps, or uh, mercenaries from the Wagner Group, including uh, many convicted criminals, to supply their uh, the, the manpower with worst systems. So given that, there are two new armies with uh, different systems, uh, different training re regiments, uh, different logistical systems that are going to face each other. So it's very difficult to predict. Maybe I can talk a bit about the, 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 the poss possibilities of where 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 we will see the major showdowns, but uh, I don't, or I don't want to speculate, so I don't no. give up anything. Yeah, let's leave it to, to time. Let's leave it to time. We'll observe and then we'll um, discuss uh, what's going on on the battlefield. But on the other hand, you expressed uh, everything that we have on our side and what Russians have on their side right now.